Good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to thank everyone for showing up and support on this special day. I'm here to introduce our own uh, drug literature specialist, advisor of CPFI, and mentor to many of us, including myself. Thank you. Uh, so without further ado, here's Dr. Shelley. So students, this will be the first time you won't hear me lecturing on drugs. Yay. Um, if we can go to a moment of prayer. Dear Lord, we marvel at you who are omniscient, for you already know how these men and women who have labored long will continue to grow and serve your greatest creation, mankind. We thank you who are omnipresent, for you are there for each and every person's in their trials, tribulations, and triumphs while in school. Please remain in their lives and, and practice. We sing out in praises for you who are omnipotent. Your power and encouragement guided and allowed these new practitioners to celebrate their success today. And now it is we who have loved, supported, and taught you these amazing persons to cry out it in a joyful noise of celebration, for it is finished. It's in your most precious name that we pray, amen. It's one of those days. Um, it is my great honor and privilege to introduce you to someone pretty much everybody knows here. Dr. Ed Welch, he's been here for 29 years, um, been an inspiration to many of us, and will continue to do so in, in later in life. Thank you. Oh, say can. You see. Oh, say can. You see. Darn right we can. It's a beautiful day. Pleasure to welcome you to the Hooding and Oath Ceremony for the 2018 School of Pharmacy graduates of the University of Charleston. And I'm standing here with a trophy. And many of you know what this is. This is a national championship trophy for our men's soccer team, which uh, pulled that off this year. And that trophy stands for excellence. That team realized their potential. They fulfilled their vision because they thought they could win that national title. They were resilient. They were in the Final Four three times before they won it, and they lost the last game before the national championship tournament. They demonstrated excellence. No one scored on them throughout the entire national tournament, and they were a team, a collection of people from different backgrounds around the world with different interests who came together to pursue a common goal. And every time they played, they represented you. They represented the University of Charleston. I tell you that story because many people today describe our world in black and white terms, pitting group against group and ideology against ideology. But that's not the real world. The real world is shades of gray. And if your education has been successful, you are learning how to discern shades of gray, differences of nuance. And for you to have that life of productive work and life of living and community involvement, that's exactly what you need to do. So like that team, I want you to be maximizing your potential, be resilient, demonstrate excellence, and do it with others as a team. So we celebrate your excellence today for what you have achieved. Congratulations and for what you will do for all of us. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be with you. Enjoy your day. To our parents, loved ones, friends, mentors, 
preceptors, and the esteemed faculty and staff at the University of Charleston School of Pharmacy. Good afternoon, and on behalf of the class of 2018, we welcome you to our hooding and oath ceremony. <laughs> class of 2018, where are you at? <laughs> My name is Victoria Oyewole, and I am the president of the class of 2018. I'm I'm beyond excited and honored to be in front of all of you today to be able to just share in this celebration. I know it's a hectic and very crazy weekend, but in all things, let's take a moment and slow down and just soak it all in. This is an amazing milestone, and along with the class of 2018, we wouldn't be here if not for all of you as well. 2018 has been a year of blessings, a year of challenges, etc. Um, to the class of 2018, let this mark the end of an era of countless exams, e-portfolio, top 20 quizzes, always missing holidays and family vacations, and last but certainly not least, living off of Sally Mae as our primary source of income. <laughs> you can't live off Grad Plus forever. Um, I would like to just get straight to the point um, and really get to the heart of just a couple things I think have been pertinent, especially in the final year of pharmacy school um, to our class that I think um, really resonated with me and will resonate with each and every one of us kind of in our own way. No matter what path life carries us on after today, always embrace the ebbs and flows of life. For some of us, life looks exactly how we thought it would at the end of P1 year, but for many of us, it couldn't be any more different. In all things, understand that everything has its natural cycles and don't panic, ride the wave, and just trust the process. Be strong in your purpose and always clear in your vision. Always strive to continuously improve yourself. You'll break chains feeding the truest form of yourself rather than replicating others. It's often the difficult paths that have the most beautiful outcomes. And in the wise words of Queen Beyonce Knowles, twirl on them haters, grind till you own it, and slay all day. 2018 and our whole journey, it brought a whole bunch of absolute great highs and a lot of devastating lows. At this time, I'd like to take a moment just to recognize our lost classmate, Kevin Doe, who did pass around this same time last year. Um, may your soul rest in heavenly peace. Outside of that, I would like to just commend our class for making it to the end. We had a lot of unique things to us, one of which is our level of participation. <laughs> it was just enough to get right past, but not quite enough unless it was mandatory. <laughs> Also, a lot of you know, perseverance, laughter, um, nights that I'm not gonna mention during this speech, but you know, we've really come a long way and this is just an awesome journey. I would also like to just congratulate all of the faculty and staff for seeing us through. I know we challenged a lot of exam questions that probably drove you crazy. And um, just a couple things I'm gonna remember and I know we all probably will remember is uh, Ryan Nolan being the first class president to last longer than a semester. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> Every time I saw Doug's hand go up in the classroom, seeing faculty members stress out because they were going to get the most complicated question they've ever encountered. <laughs> and last but not least, Gladys since P1 year, being tired, too old, <laughs> and ready to graduate. Where's Gladys? Gladys, today is your day to graduate. <laughs> and before I conclude, I had to do this. I told myself I wasn't going to, but I gotta live my best life today. Um, shout out to my mom, my dad, told him my, my family. <laughs> I didn't get to embarrass him when it was April, so Brian Hodges, Thank you, you're such an inspiration. I really appreciate all you, you've done. And before the IT cuts my mic and Dean Easton kicks me off stage, I just want to end and say class of 2018, congratulations, we did it, and cheers to many more successes. Woo! At this time, I'd like to introduce Dr. 
Joseph Janish, director and the University Singers, who will provide a musical selection on behalf of the class of 2018. Thank you. Thank you very much. No, I am not a figment of your imagination. Um, we are here to congratulate you and to entertain you just a little bit and to realize and point out that you did something that most people now can't do, which is pretty amazing. You are incredible people who have gotten through incredible challenges. This song is about challenges. This song, many people think, is a sacred song, Hallelujah by Leonard Cohen, but it really isn't a sacred song. Hallelujah is what you say when you have overcome a challenge, when you have managed to get where it is that you are.
Thank you, Dr. Janich and the university singers. We're delighted to welcome our speaker this afternoon. She was actually scheduled to be with us last fall to bring greetings for the white coat ceremony. But circumstances prevented her from getting to uh, Charleston, so we're especially pleased to have her as our keynote speaker this afternoon. And as you can see in her bibliography included in your program, Laura Cranston is engaged in a wide variety of activities related to pharmacy and pharmacy practice. She's very much on the forefront of the changing environment in healthcare and pharmacy in particular. As a graduate of St. John's University College of Pharmacy and Allied Health Professions, she continues to serve her alma mater in numerous ways. She recently served as the Executive Director for the Institute of Advancement of Community Pharmacy, advocating for innovative practice in ambulatory care in both independent retail pharmacies as well as chain store community practice. She currently is the Executive Director of the Pharmacy Quality Assurance, or PQA, which oversees the development of medication use measures encouraging implementation of meaningful delivery of medications in the healthcare system. She is pharmacy's representative to the National Priorities Partnership, an initiative very involved with quality assurance. At a time when pharmacy is moving forward to expand its primary healthcare services, she is a proponent for innovation in pharmacy practice and the pharmacy profession and she's very dedicated to quality assurance and the delivery of medication use. It's my great pleasure at this time to present to you our speaker, one who is dedicated to the promotion of quality in pharmacy, Laura Cranston. Good afternoon. Congratulations to the class of 2018. I am very pleased to be here today because last year I tried this and it was a disaster. I wound up in Columbus, diverted my airplane, so I do find it an accomplishment just to be here today. Uh, as student pharmacists, you have worked incredibly hard to get where you are today. And you've made sacrifices along the way and you've faced challenges, but here you are overcoming all of that. And I now can really relate to the fact that it takes a village to get to where you are. I have two sons, one in college and one who will graduate high school in just two weeks. So I have a keen appreciation of the dedication that your parents, your grandparents, your siblings, your spouses in some cases, or your significant others have made to help you get to this point today. You couple family and friends with the dedicated support of the faculty and the dean and the administration. And I would like to take a moment to applaud them. They have spent countless hours mentoring, teaching, and, and in every way facilitating your formal education. And when you graduate tomorrow, you have to flip that role over the course of the next decade or more, instead of you being mentored by them, you're going to turn around and be a mentor to future students and future pharmacists. And that's a role that you should cherish. So I'm sure they will look forward to that and seeing you back on campus in a different role. Today marks the start of many new beginnings. Some of you will be heading off to practice, some of you will be completing residencies, maybe some of you will continue your formal education by pursuing a master's or a PhD. But no matter what the path that you choose to take beyond tomorrow, I have a couple of lessons that I'd like to share and some insights that I'd like to share with you. First of all, one of the greatest opportunities for you as a pharmacist leader is that you are going to shape the face of healthcare. So don't limit your role to thinking that you can change pharmacy, though many of you in this room will and already have, but think of a broader vision over the next 20 to 30 years of your career or maybe longer, and think about your runway as changing healthcare or substantially helping to shape it. 
You know, in the not too distant future, you may see state or federal legislation passed that will recognize pharmacists as providers, and soon you will have that provider status recognition. But don't wait, okay? Don't wait for state or federal legislation to practice, uh, to pass, before you take the necessary steps to become fully embedded into team-based models of care. Working with your peers in medicine, nursing, physical therapy, and across all healthcare disciplines to impact patient outcomes. Adopt the mindset that you are a healthcare provider, and when the, whether or not the states or feds recognize that, the reality is you are. And when I think about the 64 graduates in this room today, I'm reminded of the three E's equip, engage, and empower. Certainly over the past four years, through your professional education and through the IPPIES and the YAPPIES and the student internships, I think we would all agree that you have been more than adequately equipped. My challenge for you is to stay equipped. Keep up with the pace of healthcare innovation. Never stop learning. The second E is engage. And that is how are you engaging and who are you engaging with? The profession has molded and shaped many leaders that have come before us. When I look at the short period of time since I graduated, when I graduated pharmacy school, only 11 states in the United States allowed a pharmacist to immunize. Today, 50 states allow pharmacists to immunize. So many additional states allow pharmacists to engage in collaborative practice arrangements with physicians. That's going to be the norm, I'd say, over the next 10 years. So think about engaging at a very high level. You can start locally, you can move to the state, and then on a national level, because there is still so much left to do as a profession and so much more that we can accomplish. We can move further and faster if you stay engaged. When I think about students, and I think about my own trajectory as a student in pharmacy school, many of you probably belong to APHA or ASHP or SNAFA or Christian Fellowship for Pharmacists, and the list goes on. But what happens is when your student journey ends and you become a pharmacist, and pharmacists become busy, and life happens. And what happens sometimes during that period when you get out into the workforce and you're refocusing your priorities and you're working on advancing your career, you kind of put that engagement in the profession on hold. So I challenge you not to do that. And from the very beginning, when you graduate, stay engaged at the professional level. And the third E is for empowerment. Most of us have an inner craving to be empowered as professionals, to practice at the top of our license, to interact with patients in a meaningful way and to impact their care directly. Empowerment it is a good thing, not only when we're empowered as employees or as a resident or a practicing pharmacist, but empowering others is also critically important. If we want to practice at the top of our license, we need to empower the team that will be surrounding you to perform the roles that they are been charged with to the best of their ability. When I think about my career over the past 30 years, I've worked in healthcare association management. And the work that I do at the Pharmacy Quality Alliance does not direct, directly put me in touch with patients. But the work that I can do is impacting patient care every day. So if you think about your phone, how many of you have the Yelp app on your phone? Nobody? The Yelp app? Okay. Well, the Yelp app rates restaurants that you're going to, or hotels, or other places that you want to visit. We, PQA, are the Yelp, if you will, for the health plan community. We rate health plans on the quality of care that they provide from a medication use standpoint. So, for example, many of the folks in this room, maybe grandparents, are on certain medications. Do those medications increase their risk of falls? You know, that's the type of work that we do. We develop measures that then get used in the Medicare program. 
And so when I graduated, if you would have ever asked me if I would be working for a measure development organization, I would have said, a what? A who? You know? So be open to the, the pathway that your career will lead you in. There's a quote that I look at every day. I have it sitting on my desk. And it's a quote from a famous artist, Pablo Picasso. And it says, the meaning of life is to find your gift and the purpose of life is to give it away. And when I think about success, I view success as not missing the right opportunity because you are so busy chasing down every opportunity that comes your way. And in a world where we are taught to conform from the time we are born, Pablo Picasso is a symbol of individual expression and truth. He found his gift as an artist and he gave his gift to the world. So when I sat where you were sitting today, I found my gift, not right away, certainly not right away, but I found my gift within the profession of pharmacy. And my purpose is to help spread that passion for the profession by making a difference in patients' lives. You know, my son, who is my ultimate reviewer nowadays of every essay or paper that I write, he was reading this over and he said to me, hey mom, do you remember what the word passion meant? And obviously, from my Latin days in pharmacy school, I forgot. And he said, the word passion comes from the Latin root patty, meaning suffering or enduring. And your, your passion for our profession comes out of your hard work, your suffering, and your endurance. But passion at its core needs to be quenched, and we quench that through the work that we will pursue. But our trick, the trick here is to tie your passion with operating in the strengths, your core strengths. What are your two core strengths? Take a moment, type them into your cell phones over the next 24, 48 hours, and look at them daily, and see if you're tying your passion to your two core strengths, because if you do, your, su your success will be unending. So I think about my strengths, and I say, am I an, an encourager, am I a listener, Am I a communicator? Are you a researcher? Are you an entrepreneur? Are you a risk taker? The beauty about our profession is that there are so many different diverse opportunities for you. And that over the next couple of years, you'll begin to find that niche and tie your passions to your inner strengths. A personal example that I'd like to share with you about how I got to do what I'm doing right now is probably tied to uh, an example about my dad. My father had suffered from a very progressive dis disorder that caused him to rapidly physically decline and mentally decline. And he was up in New York and I was in Virginia. And there was not much that I could do about it. Uh, he was on a drug that you probably learned about called Namenda. And Namenda was a drug that is used to slow the progression of dementia or slow the further loss of of his memory. Well, I would go and visit every six weeks and it was getting worse and he didn't recognize me and there was really, you know, it was, it was getting bad. And I said to my mother, I'd like to go to the your neurologist with my dad. And so together we went to the neurologist and I explained to the neurologist that I was a pharmacist and I said, you know, can we take him off of this medicine? It's really not doing much good anymore. And there's a lot of side effects that he's experiencing from that medicine. And the neurologist said, no, I don't think we should do that. And um, so it was like the end of discussion. You know, my mom didn't challenge it. And I, you know, I pushed back. I gave a few reasons why and she, she disagreed. So I thought to myself, and I don't know if you learned about this in school, but one of the biggest principles that we're striving for in our healthcare system today is something called shared decision making, where the patient, together with the provider and the caregiver, decides what are the goals of the patient and the patient's family, and are we meeting those goals? Well, I really felt like this was a perfect example of no shared decision making. And so that's what gets me up in the morning, and that's why I like to work in an organization that's developing quality measures and looking at what needs to be improved in our healthcare system. 
So, I want to leave you with a few thoughts. You know, now, now, outside of getting past the NABLEX exam this summer, okay, you might actually have time to pick up a book and read for pleasure. This is something I'm trying to convince my children to do. It doesn't exactly work. So I have decided that, okay, instead of a book, maybe read a poem or pick up a poem. So I came across a poem that I thought was very fitting for today. And it was written by Mother Teresa, and it was posted on a wall in her home in Calcutta. And it's called the Anyway Poem. So each verse of this poem ends with the word anyway. And I would encourage you all, as you're hearing this poem, to help me with the last word in each phrase. Ready? If you are kind, people may accuse you of selfish, ulterior motives. Be kind. Anyway. If you are successful, you will win some unfaithful friends and some genuine enemies. Succeed. Anyway. If you are honest and sincere, people may deceive you. Be honest and sincere. Anyway. What you spend years creating, others could destroy overnight. Create. Anyway. anyway. If you find serenity and happiness, some may be jealous. Be happy anyway. The good you do today will often be forgotten. Do good Give the best you have and it will never be enough. But give your best Thank you. My thoughts and prayers are with you all. That you will give your best to the profession that you have chosen every day in very simple ways and with a deep-seated passion as you play to your core strengths. Thank you so much for having me here today to celebrate this special occasion. Mr. Ramirez, please present the candidates for the Doctor of Pharmacy degree. Pharmacy Fellow, Kyle David Atkins. Cody Neal Alderman. <laughs> Pharmacy Fellow, Martha Fikru Ashami. Charles David Basden.
Kevin Edward Durham Bolter. Ricardo Stephen Berkeley. Pharmacy Fellow, Allison Grace Bradford. Priscilla Bowie. Dominic Anthony Santafonti. Daniel Lee Chapman. Lynn Nay Chi. Dana Rose Shiroki. Douglas Alexander Criado. <laughs> Gloricel Cruz. Bradley David Cunningham. <laughs> Rome Kamal Dang Resort. Jennifer Shayna Davis. <laughs> Karina Michelle Del Sol. A moment of silence in memory of our classmate, Kevin Doe. Dominique Noel Dobson. Carissa Page 
Johnson. Samantha Ann Farah. Zachary Arnold Fletcher. Julia Gerevich. William 
Lin Q Kim. Victoria 
Abolaje.
Angel Lynn Withrow. It is with great honor that I get to introduce uh, this afternoon the preceptor of the year as chosen by the class of 2018, and that's Dr. Brian Hodges, who is the coordinator for clinical pharmacy services and critical care pharmacy at Charleston Area Medical Center. He earned his bachelor and doctor of pharmacy degrees from West Virginia University School of Pharmacy and completed a two-year specialized residency in pharmacotherapy practice at the Medical University of South Carolina. Prior to coming to CAMC, Dr. Hodges served as a faculty member at WVU and clinical uh, specialist at Marshall University. He has three times received Outstanding Teacher of the Year's awards at WVU. He has practice experience in numerous critical care settings, has authored papers and chapters in widely read journals and textbooks, and has been active in national pharmacy organizations. His current practice and research interests include assessing therapeutic drug monitoring, evidence-based nutrition, support therapies, and safe drug utilization in critically ill patients. And he's here this afternoon to lead our soon-to-be doctors of pharmacy in their oath of the pharmacists. Please rise and join me in uh, the other words. Uh, you'll, you'll find it on the inside cover if, if you don't know the words. You can just them. I promise to devote myself to a lifetime of service to others through the profession of pharmacy. In fulfilling this vow, I will consider the welfare of humanity relief of suffering my primary concerns. I will apply my knowledge, experience, and skills to the best of my ability to assure optimal outcomes for my patients. I will respect and protect all personal and health information entrusted to me. I will accept the lifelong obligation to improve my professional knowledge and competence. I will hold myself and my colleagues to the highest principles our profession's moral, ethical, and legal conduct. I will embrace and advocate changes that improve patient care. I will utilize my knowledge, skills, experiences, and values to prepare the next generation of pharmacists. I take these vows voluntarily with the full realization of the responsibility with which I am entrusted by the public. of Charleston School of Pharmacy, it is with great pleasure that I share the charge and closing remarks for this wonderful ceremony in honor of the class of 2018. It is first most fitting to share heartfelt words of great emotion and appreciation for groups of persons who have helped in making this day possible. So I'd like to ask the following persons to stand for recognition and appreciation, coupled by your applause. To the University of Charleston School of Pharmacy, faculty and staff members, please stand. Your commitment to come back day after day oftentimes pushing through the winds of resistance to ensure that you serve as appropriate role models, challenge the internal barriers that our graduates and their classmates often carry with them, and serve as an inspiration and motivator for them to reach their ultimate potential. 
we applaud you. The commitment to increasing the value of our curricular and co-curricular programming designed to serve and protect the health lives of the patients that our students and graduates will serve. Entrusted to their care, we salute you for your resolute commitment to the University of Charleston and more specifically to the profession of pharmacy. Thank you, University of Charleston School of Pharmacy faculty and staff members. <laughs> to those who have walked in the shoes of our current graduates, sat in their seats, and trained in their training locations, you've helped pave the way for the class of 2018 and beyond, and you've set an example. Would all University of Charleston School of Pharmacy alumni please stand and be recognized? <laughs> to the members of the University Administration, President Welch, Provost Spezio, members of the University Cabinet, or Board of Trustees member, we recognize you on this special day for your wisdom, insight, and support that is provided to the School of Pharmacy as one of the academic programs of the institution. We applaud you. <laughs> to preceptors, to members of the West Virginia Board of Pharmacy, West Virginia Pharmacy Association, members of the West Virginia Society of Health Systems Pharmacy who may be here, I would ask that you stand and be recognized because you have provided instruction for our students, but through policy making and advocacy, you also help to improve the care and provision of care in West Virginia. If any of those members are present, please stand and be recognized. Last but certainly not least, the group of individuals that I would like to recognize are the parents, the grandparents, aunts, uncles, wives, husbands, children, play pretend relatives, neighbors, friends, those of you who have been here supporting our graduates. We ask you, you don't need to stand unless you want to, but we want to recognize you and appreciate you for all of your support. great celebration for your achievements. We also ask the graduates to share with us once you successfully, I'm claiming it, successfully pass the NAPLEX and the MPG on the first attempt, let us know so that we can celebrate in your success. Last but certainly not least of the class of 2018, let's savor this moment. Savor this occasion, this weekend. Accomplishments such as today and what you will experience tomorrow were the results of your intentional decisions when you chose to become a pharmacist. Quite frankly, the decisions that you made even prior to that. But you should enjoy this moment. It is not every day that you are the victor of the accomplishment of becoming a pharmacist. Savor the moment, celebrate it. The success was something that we all share in. Your parents, your family members, your faculty, your staff, university administration, we're proud of the very fact that day after day, you made the intentional decision to keep moving forward. Patients are on the other side of Sunday, waiting for you, waiting for your compassion, waiting for your empathy, waiting for your knowledge, waiting for your concern, looking for your patients to provide them with the care that you've taken four years in pharmacy school to acquire. So while there are no more professional dress, I know you're really disappointed about that, that's required, 
As Victoria said, no more e-portfolio, no more top 20, no more convocation, no more group assignments, no more Thanksgiving, Christmas, and summer breaks. <laughs> While you won't be enjoying many of those things, or you will be able to enjoy life without those things, understand that we succeed because you succeed. And we want you to have more passion more courage, increase your character, strive for excellence. We wish you more energy. We, miss you, we wish you more humility. And we want you to walk the talk of a pharmacist. Pharmacists are honored individuals whose integrity and honesty helps us provide the best possible care that we can to our patients. So as Luke 12, 48 states, for, whom, for unto whomsoever much is given of him, much is required. You have been given much. Just ask your family and friends. They can rattle off numerous things that they have personally given to you. But we want you to go forth after commencement and be good pharmacists. We want you to be good family members, good leaders, good servants. We want you to be committed to continue to learn, grow, and develop in your craft as a pharmacist. Much has been deposited into you. We want you to bloom where you've been planted and to give back to future pharmacists. We want you to be preceptors. We want you to follow the steps of some of our alums who are in fact preceptors even though they're not in the Charleston area. So my charge to you is to commit yourself to lifelong pursuit of excellence in all that you do. May your heart help guide the works of your head and your hands. I'd like you to recognize that your ultimate attitude is determined, your ultimate altitude is determined by your attitude. Remember that respect for self, others, and your profession is the golden rule in pharmacy that will serve you long and well. We want you to give back more and with more grace to others than they have done for you. And lastly, we want you to exhibit empathy and do it with excellence with everyone you encounter. You've completed the first part. Tomorrow you will officially graduate from the University of Charleston having completed the requirements necessary to earn the Doctor of Pharmacy degree. With that acceptance, there are rights privileges, and responsibilities. Keep them golden, keep them honorable, and to you, we bow and congratulate you on your achievements. Congratulations to the class. We also invite you to take as many pictures as your heart's desires with each other, with the faculty and staff of university administration, and all who are gathered here in celebration and honor of this great occasion. I'd ask that as the music is queued up, that uh, persons in the audience please wait until the stage party and our graduates um, process from this ceremony. Thank you.